So this is a big shop. And yes. So <laughs> where did the idea come from this, in terms of the name? Because it's a um, brand now, so where did the idea come It's just, be? wow, this is a really fun question mm -hmm. because it came from YouTube. Really? Yeah, I did put it out there that I was looking for a name ah, for the okay, shop. like a poll. Exactly. Right, okay. People like, kind of like said this and this one mm. said this and then like a few of the comments were saying, oh, why don't you name it the big shop? Because it's ironic because it's a small shop. Mm. So, and they're going to be small It's not small, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's, you are saying that you want it to be all over the country. So after mm. a while, they're going to be small, small shops and all over the country. So why don't you just name it the big shop? So I took mm. the name from YouTube actually. Oh, okay. You know, New York, you were living in New York and place where, or let, let shall I say, living in America where right. the land of uh, American dream and that's, <laughs> that's where everything is working. It's, yeah. you know, infrastructure is there, whatever you want, you know where to get them. Everything's just organized. Right. Then coming to Ghana here, I know. Wh why? why why would anybody do that? You know who even asked me that? There's mm. like, I have a contact person at Ghana, like Revenue Authority, the ones that I pay my taxes to. Okay. Asked me why I did that. It's like, why would you come to Ghana and do this? Why not just do it over there? But the truth of the matter is, if I was in America, I could not do this. I, I couldn't have done this. It seems mm. like you're, you're, you know, you should be able to go to a land of opportunity or whatever, but yeah. I'm African, I'm black, I'm mm. a woman. Yeah. You know, it's not, it was not going to be an easy climb for me to do that. Mm. You know, I couldn't just come in there and start a business model and not get any. If you see a lot of the business owners in America, they're mostly like Middle Eastern or mm. white. It's for a reason. Don't you think Africans are whether we see these things and we want to do yeah. it? But yeah, it, not that they don't want to do it. Yeah, they're just, just the so access to do it is not easy. It's mm. not you know i could save all my money that i made mm. you know working in america and come here and do something mm. in my home that will actually yeah. benefit my people but yeah. if i was going to do it in order to like you know start something somewhere it, it was not going to be an easy thing to do mm. i'm exhausted i've been up since 5 a.m about to close oh my god so what are some of the challenges you face why why trying to you know set out to different locations and oh lord um first of all and then even maybe registering the company i know i mean at this time i don't know what to tell you <laughs> everything is a challenge um number one in ghana like commercial buildings don't go the rent is not monthly mm. you have to pay it oh like a a year or two years or something. Four years in four advance. Years. Try, try four or five years in advance. Wow. So that was wow, the, wow, the first wow. one. Like you see a place, you love it, and mm. it's priced in dollars. And <laughs> and they don't want to take a year or two advance. After you've scraped, they don't mm. want that. They want four years in advance. So that was the biggest thing, you know, getting the space, mm. you know, actually for the business. And then also there are a lot of like things that, the registration process is not straightforward. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there should be a, uh, a set, you know, checklist. If yeah. I was starting a business in Ghana, I need to go to GR, I need to go to SNET. I need, they didn't do any of that. But so thank God that I had a business before. And so you I had have to figure through. out everything exactly. that you go. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You have to ask people, you have mm. to figure it out and see what are the permits I need, what is this, what is that. It, 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 it isn't a very seamless process, mm -hmm. I would say. So that's pretty much. So in, in terms of um, the big dream then for uh, this, because I, I follow uh, since you were looking for the Places, location and everything. Yes. And um, so I think you've mentioned something about, um, is it like a franchise or is it like, having it in other at other yes, locations yes so what do you uh, so what's the model is it going to be a franchise like somebody coming and then they see you just using your name and I, almost like the way mcdonald's and all of this like world, kfc and yeah so, they yeah. Are matching, yeah so they are franchise. yeah for sure i i would want i definitely would want to start a franchise because when you ask a lot of Ghanaians in business yeah. they would tell you that usually businesses die with their owners Mm -hmm. um, the reason is that we don't ever train someone to succeed you or take yeah, over. Yeah. We rely on maybe my kids will love it. What if your kids have something else they want to yeah, do? Yeah, something else they want to do, yeah. <laughs> you know, so a lot of <laughs> things true. like TT Brothers. There, there's mm. been a lot of companies like um, Top Man. So many mm. different companies in Ghana that just, the owner died, the business died. Yeah, it's very common in Africa, isn't it? Right, yeah. so I, for one, that's the thing. I don't want 
to start something and then you know when my time comes and I pass away and then the business will just die mm -hmm. with me so it will be a franchise what I want people I can't possibly replicate this in every neighborhood by myself mm. I'm gonna end up having like 6,000 stores or something like that yeah. <laughs> that's not something that I'm interested in doing like you said I have other things that I would like to do as well yeah so I would want you know other people you know to come in and see you know the stats like my business like these are the numbers you could make yeah. every month or and then they can take the model exactly as it is like wooden cabinets have a coffee stand have a yeah. ready food stand take the exact model and mm. replicate it wherever they are yeah and then maybe annually we could talk about giving the company like a cut of your profit or something like right. that yeah and then capital well, well, yeah, <laughs> capital of course i mean that was I have nothing in my bank account, guys. Good. Like I, I, I don't even have a bank account anymore. <laughs> I don't have any money mm. left. I've put everything in here, and yeah. so that that has been the challenges, I would say. How easy or difficult is it to to um, get suppliers and? Again, you know, you don't ever get all the things that you need from one place. Mm. So I'm a member of like a wholesale club. So I go, oh, okay. yeah. So there's a big warehouse where people that have shops can sign your shop up mm -hmm. and then you would get things from there. So some of the things I get from there, um, some of them I brought from America, which I'm not going to do again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the little candy stuff and mm. the, cause they're, ch you know, they're cheaper over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now doing the conversion is a killer. Conversion, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. not anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's easier to get that, but it also kind of gave me a new business idea, which is like, I probably have to, as the, the model goes up. Mm. As the franchises pop up, I should like probably have my own wholesale place for people to just come get okay. the yeah. stuff that yeah. they need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how important is it for Africans to uh, invest in Africa? Oh, it's like uh, yeah, it's absolutely like paramount that we do that because I even over here, you know, a lot of people ask you why did you come back? Why did you come back? And I said, if you have an inclination to leave the country for every reason, mm. you should do that. You should yeah. try and go make it somewhere wherever. But at the end of the day, you need to come back home, mm. you know, because we're at the age where imagine for the re for the next 30 years of my life, I was paying my taxes to the American government. And mm. I was like, you know, giving all my knowledge to them at the end when I'm 60 something, I want to come back to Ghana. Imagine mm. all the 30 something, 40 year olds had gone when I went. What, what are we going to come back to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. So the brain drain too is definitely a thing. Like Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a really big problem, isn't it? It's a huge thing. <laughs> I think people like kind of yeah. like underestimate how much it is. But you want to retire in your mm. country when you're older. But who should stay here and make sure the country exists when you're... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, African-Americans and people, black people everywhere mm. in the diaspora and like mm. away from the motherland. Like you can bring your talents and your yeah. skill and your money too. Like I see a lot of people having a desire to come to do stuff here, but you need money for that. Yeah, you obviously. obviously. You, you definitely have to come. Yeah, money is really important to contribute really wherever it is that done. you can. Yeah. yeah. So wh why do you think uh, the price of things in dollar, like real estate, for example, in Ghana, is it because the uh, city isn't stable? Is that why or is that, are there other reasons? Yeah, I think it's primarily that. Mm. It's just because the, the city is not really stable. And also our government prices things in dollars. Like if we had our budget reading recently, <laughs> you would hear a bunch not, of things. They're not a good example. No, they're, they're not. not really good example. Yeah, they're telling us not to price things in dollars, but you're reading our yearly budget in dollars. Mm. So then if I'm doing my yearly budget, I'm going to do it in dollars as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is the issue, but yeah, I mean, the dollar has become like a unit of measure for a lot of countries right now, which is not exactly a good thing, really. Mm. But yeah, no. One, one very important part of um, this business is the kind of like a organic, um, right. you know, things, natural things and all of that. So what are the products that you have? The, um, kind of like in that bracket of organic. And okay, so I did start off like wanting to make the, the fruit carts out there like 100% organic. Mm -hmm. And I did find out that a lot of Ghanaians are under the assumption that the food that they consume is already organic, okay. which is 100% false. In fact, most of the food that we consume is not organic. Right. Um, so I did, <laughs> I did try to explain to people that it wasn't organic. 
and it's been an uphill climb. So for so what was the example of some of the food that okay? So some some of the know. foods like maybe you know our bananas mm -hmm. and our apples and you know, the actual raw things that we eat. Carrots are like from Egypt, mass produced. Oh. Yeah, mass produced. The carrots on okay. the market are from Egypt. Um, tomatoes <laughs> wow. are from Burkina Faso, and these are mass commercially produced. They're not organic. Right. Okay. So the stuff that I use for um, the smoothie bar, I mm -hmm. get them from an organic farm just up the mountain. So I have the, they make kale, they make all of that good stuff, mm -hmm. bananas, local um, oranges, everything from there. Okay. And that's what I use here. But over here, I've had to use the commercial stuff because people just don't want to pay for organic. <laughs> <laughs> but if you take a product like this, like the black soap, um, we got it from Tamale. There's a guy there okay. that makes a lot of different hair products and skin oh, products. Oh, I thought black soap uh, kind of like a solid. Yeah, but he's made it into like this a stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if you could smell it, he's like kind of like try. Oh wow, it's it smells really nice. Exactly, it doesn't yeah. smell like black soap. So I think his whole idea, he's trying to like compete with brands like Dove that are mm -hmm. more popular. Yeah. So we've sold quite a bit of these by letting people smell it and mm. like try it mm. and things like that. So we have these, we have that as well. Um, see some of the fish powder and stuff. If you take the ingredients in, in let's say the all pepper seasoning, right? Yeah. It has what? Bay leaves, cloves, thyme, ginger, garlic, basil, and aniseed. This is all natural stuff, right? Mm. Now, but if I went and I took like, let's just take the whole thing, why don't Maggie. we? We take a Maggie, you see, iodized yeah. salt, starch, flavor enhancers, sodium, yeah. whatever, sodium, yeah. whatever. Sodium. I, I think when you, you know it, what that's, I mean? this is one of the things that, yes. once, once uh, this is what I tell my kids, like once you begin to see some kind of like a strange thing exactly. that you can't pronounce, you're struggling to pronounce, then you know that. Don't consume <laughs> that. Yeah, wrong, and I just so. feel like as Africans too, mm. like, oh my God, like we mm. can't be having, cause I feel like our land gives us everything that we need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also another, part of it is like the chicken that we eat okay. like you know so i have these um so this is like full chicken it has mm -hmm. been portioned it's been cleaned and everything so you have all the parts there's like the feet the liver yeah. everything is in there for you um like the way we used to eat before we have lamb and you know this is also fresh beef as well that i made them package purposely for that mm. because i don't understand you living in ghana and eating chicken from poland like it just doesn't sit well <laughs> you know it just doesn't sit well with so i have tried to inc incorporate like certain local things mm. into um the shop and it's been it's taking education but it's going don't ship the stuff to ghana we have all the things over here okay we have everything over here go to my catalog plus two three three five five zero five five four four nine three plus two three three zero five five four four nine you see the entire catalog with everything that we have in there wherever your family is in Ghana from here all the way to Wa to Wale Wale to you know wherever the person is as long as cars go there we can deliver the stuff to them right now we're on gg.com.ghana you can go and check us out the shop is the big shop of course um, we have our products that we're still uploading there are some other e-commerce sites that we're considering as well so we we've kind of had to change the business around a little bit using them online to support us so it has been going great that way